you know, Saul Griffith is going to be speaking on energy literacy tomorrow, but as some of you may know, he spends a lot of time on science education, so he's here to talk about his personal passion. Please welcome Saul. Thank you, Brady. So this is, a, this is probably one of my favorite projects. Uh, this is called How Tunes. This is a book that we published last year. It's basically trying to encourage kids of the adventure and the spirit of invention in science and engineering. Or as Tim O'Reilly might have said it in his speech earlier, you know, how do you write a book to train, to hack the hackers of tomorrow? Um, this image is sort of what we're trying to do. How do you make heroes of children? Or as Morris Sendak, writer of Where the Wild Things Are, says, you know, childhood is your last chance to be a true hero. So with this book, we're trying to give children, through fart jokes, the possibility to be their own heroes. Because um, if you're, you know, we're trying to communicate here with eight to 12 year olds, this project is how to build sort of an open source whoopee cushion with a couple of rubber bands and a coat hanger. Um, but we're really trying to inspire kids, particularly to pick up the, you know, the chief hacker ethos of uh, dumpster diving, something that I learned at MIT. I, in fact, started a complete lab in, uh, in Emeryville with stuff I dumpster dive from MIT. Um, so you want to start with kids like that. You want to give them a full toolkit with which to hack the future. So in our cartoons, um, drawn by a fabulous illustrator called Nick Dragotta, we include sort of tutorials on all the basic tools so kids can get started hacking uh, the simple objects in the world around them. Now, if you give kids tools and you work in America, you have to think about safety. So um, we had a very uh, a, a publisher with a lot of foresight who allowed us to use a graphic image instead of a safety disclaimer. Um, and uh, we were particularly concerned <laughs> about eye safety. And I think if you're trying to communicate to kids and you're trying to really reach out to them, you don't sort of beat it into them. You just make it, you know, the results of their uh, sort of actions extremely graphic. Um, so, why would you want to be concerned about eye safety? Because if you, like I, had an older sister who was a royal pain in your ass, you would be playing video games, she would be around the corner sniping you with uh, a marshmallow shooting cannon. Um, so, once she's hit you with that, you have to go and reverse engineer the, uh, the marshmallow cannon. And so, this is how we actually embed the instructions for, our, uh, for the kids to follow within the story of the book. So here, you know, you go to the hardware store and for about a dollar you can build the simple marshmallow shooter, but we'd like to encourage kids further to go off and invent their own variations, because really the goal of this is you're trying, you, you know, you're trying to encourage kids to see the world not for what it is now, not for the simple basic marshmallow shooter, but for the marshmallow shooter it really could be. Um, in the same book we also really try to encourage kids to do a lot of the old-fashioned things like climb trees and we teach, uh, we use a story, this is about the legend of the monkey fist, um, introduces to them the monkey fist knots and all sorts of other knots useful for climbing trees. We teach them to count in binary. Um, so this is uh, 128. Um, very important skill for a 10 year old. Um, then we, you know, we, we tell the stories really in the spirit of adventure. So, for example, you want to teach kids how to make ice cream with a couple of plastic bags. You obviously start with the story of a Mongolian riding a frozen donkey. Uh, so happens that the kids discover the invention of ice cream because riding the now unfrozen donkey down the hill with all the, the, the things that they've uh, got in their trading, donkey falls down salt falls in the ice, that lowers the freezing point, all the ingredients land in it and they make ice cream. Uh, we also try to have some more sort of somber or, or projects. This one is about how to build a terrarium and this sort of storyline for terrarium building is if you're going to go to Mars, you have to build a fully contained ecosystem. Of course, you also want to train kids to grow up to be rock stars because that's what they see in the media. So in this particular story, we how to make a flute out of a turkey baster. Um, and I, I can't remember the... When you're ready, you know, we, we totally ripped off on, on heavy metal bands. But obviously one of the, the big things to inspire kids has always been space and space spiders. Um, so they go off to build their own rocket uh, and one of the things we try to encourage kids is not to be discouraged by failure. So in fact, in the rocket story, the first few rockets do not fire like this one. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's the strength of the graphic imagery, but the kids persist, persist through the failures and eventually find success 
in, uh, in the rocket that they're able to launch and, you know, with a soda bottle and a uh, bicycle pump, you can, you can in fact launch about 200 feet. Um, and so I, I, I often worry, is the, is the project being successful? So when we go on the road and we just went on a book tour and we, we talk to a lot of kids, I always like to finish a presentation about the, the comics with a question to them, if you could invent anything, what would you invent? And without doubt, the best response ever was like a nine-year-old girl in the Midwest who said, well, I want a robotic cow. And then she starts lecturing me. As you know, a, ro a cow has four stomachs. The first stomach is the wash cycle. The second stomach is the rinse cycle. The third stomach is um, the dry cycle. And the fourth stomach folds it. So this robotic cow is going to live in my room. It's going to eat my clothes and shit out iron shirts. <laughs> so I think, you know, I think we're succeeding if that's what we're inspiring in terms of invention of kids of the future. Thanks. Thank you very much, Saul. And he'll be opening up tomorrow's keynote, City Tech.